I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you some applications of Pythagorean theorem. Grade 7 and 8 students will really benefit a lot from this particular video. We'll discuss about how to create Pythagorean triples, how to find unknown sides in right triangles, how to locate a point square root 13 units away, perimeter of triangle, find diagonal of rectangular prism, area of regular pentagon, and then we'll also discuss few word problems relating height of a ramp and distance between cars or ships. So let's begin with Pythagorean triplets. Now this is a very important concept. Let's try to see how to create Pythagorean triplets. Now here we have few formulas which can help you create Pythagorean triplets. Now what are these Pythagorean triplets? Well, the numbers like 3, 4 and 5. So if I write 3, 4 and 5, they can form three sides of a right triangle, correct? So basically, they are whole numbers which could be lengths of a right triangle. So in a triangle as shown, if I have some side here as let us say A, some side B here and C, in a right triangle, then we know that A square plus B square is equal to C square. These numbers, 3, 4 and 5, 3 square plus 4 square is equal to 5 square forms Pythagorean triplets. Now the question is, how to create many of these triplets? That is what we are going to see in this particular video, right? So I've given you some ways of doing it. So here are a few methods of creating triplets very easily. We are given you kind of formulas. We are saying select two numbers, any two numbers x and y, and then side A, which are the legs of a right triangle, will be x square minus y square, side B is 2 times xy, and C is going to be x square plus y square. You can check that they form triplets. Let's take an example. If I take x as 2, and y as 1 and replace here x square means 2 square minus 1 square we know 2 square is 4 and 4 minus 1 is 3 so one side becomes 3 b could be found by multiplying 2 times these numbers that means 2 times 2 times 1 now 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 1 is 4. So we get 4, the next number. And the third side C could be found as sum of these squares, that is 2 square plus 1 square, which is 4 plus 1 as equal to 5. Do you see we got numbers? You can check by writing 3 square plus 4 square. Do we get 5 square? Let's check. 3 square, you know, is 9, 4 square is 16, 5 square is 25. And indeed, if you add them, you get 25 equals to 25. Correct? So it works. So as an exercise, what you can do is, you can select numbers for x and y, and then calculate. For example, let me now take another number. Let's take number 3 and 2, for example, right? So if I use 3, then what can A be? A will be equal to 3 square minus 2 square. 3 square is 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. Correct? And what is going to be B? B is going to be 2 times 3 times 2, which is 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. And C is going to be sum of these two, that is 3 square plus 2 square, which is 9 plus 4, 
which is 13, right? Now you can check if we indeed get 5 square plus 12 square equals to 13 square or not, correct? So, so let's see, let's use the calculator. We have 5 square, which is 25, correct? So we have 25 plus 12 square, which is 144. So we get plus 144. And if we add them, what do we get? 144 plus 25 is equal to 169. But what is 13 square? 13 square is also 169. So, so you see that? you get triplets so you can select any value right so let's take some other value for example if i select the numbers i'm selecting smaller numbers for a reason easier calculations correct so in this case a will be equals to four square minus three square which is 16 minus nine right so 16 minus nine is seven and we can select B will be 2 times 4 times 3, which is 8 times 3 is 24. And C is going to be some of these two, which is 4 square plus 3 square or 16 plus 9, which is 25. And that is for you to check that 7 square plus 24 square will be equal to 25 square. So anyway, you can continue with this list and create Pythagorean triplets. This is a very important exercise. It's good to remember these numbers also. So we got 3, 4, 5 as the triplet, 5, 12, 13 as the other one, 7, 24, and 25 as the next one. You can add any numbers to this and create triplets. Now let's look into the second type of example, which is will find the length of indicated side in each isosceles triangle. So purposely I've taken a few isosceles triangle. Let us see how to calculate the unknown side, which is X in both these. So let me call this as our practice question A. This would be B. You can pause the video, copy these questions, solve them, and then check with my solution. Now here, this particular side is how long? Now that becomes the hypotenuse of our right triangle. These two are the smallest sides. Both are nine, right? So let me call this side as y for the time being. So in that case, y square will be equal to nine square plus nine square, correct? Nine square plus nine square is 81 plus 81. And when you add them, you get 262. So that is y square. We need to find x, right? Now in such cases, we need not find what y is. y square is good enough. This side, since we are saying is i sourceless, will also be y. What is x equals to? Well, x we could find by writing x as square root of y square plus y square right so y square is 162 we can say it is square root of 162 plus 162 right you can always use the calculator to calculate so we have square root of 162 plus 162 and that is equal to 18 so we get our answer as equal to 18 so x is equals to 18. The units are in centimeters. So we'll write centimeters for our units. You will see how we did not really find what y is. It was not required. We require y squared. So we kept it as 162. It helps. Okay. Now in this particular case, it is a very tricky question. It looks simple. But look at it. We are given only one side. We have to find the other sides. Well, that is the hypotenuse longest side. So in our case, x square plus x square is equal to 12 square. x and x, when you add them, squares. So we get 2 times x square 
as equals to 144. So x square is half of 144. So we have x square as when you divide 2 times 7, 72. So x is equals to square root of 72, right? So let's calculate using calculator what is square root of 72. At times you may be required to estimate the answers, correct? 72 is between 64 and 81, so the answer is between 8 and 9, correct? Let's see the decimal equivalent. It is 8.48, so it is 8.48 centimeters. Let's round it to 10th place, so we can write this as x equals to 8.5 centimeters, correct? Very important here is always to write down the units, right? So don't forget to write units. Now here we have a very interesting question. The question here is how to locate a point square root 13 units away. So we are given some mark here and we have to figure out a point which is square root 13 units away from this particular point. I hope you understand the concept. You can always pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Now, when we say square root 13, what do we mean? Let me, let me kind of sketch it here. So, we really mean that the somehow we have to get one side as square root 13. Now, we could get square root 13 in many different ways. Uh, you could get this as... Uh, uh, 1 plus, uh, I mean, 4 plus 9 is square root 13, correct? 4 plus 9 is 13, correct? So, we could get this side as, uh, as 2 and this side as 3. How did I figure that out? Well, it's like this. Square root of 13 is equals to square root of 9 plus 4. Is that okay? Now, you could write 9 as 3 square and 4 as 2 square. Now does it make a sense, right? So one side is 3, the other one is 2. We could get square root 13. So how do you locate a point which is square root 13 away? We can say that we could go 3 units in one side, let's say 1, 1, 2, 3 and 2 units uh, the other way, 1, 2. So in that case, that point will be square root 13 away, right? Because we have gone 3 this side and 2 there. Or we could go in some other direction also. We could go 3 up, 1, 2, 3, and 2 right. So that point is also square root 13 away. So likewise, we can actually get many points. So we could go 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2. So that is also square root 13 distance away from the given point. So I hope you have understood the concept. How do we get square root 13 away from a given point, right? So if I call this point as P, then all these points which we may say A, B or C are square root 13 away from P, right? Does it make sense to you? So I hope this concept is very clear. It is an excellent example. Let's move on and look into some more. So now we have a triangle here. We need to find perimeter of this triangle. So perimeter means sum of all the sides. That really means that we have to find what is this length. Let me call this as x. And what is that length, y? Well, this is right angle. So we can actually find first uh, anyone. We can find this using this triangle. So let's figure it out. So we can say x square is equal to the side opposite to 90 degrees is always the longest. So that is the hypotenuse 15 square minus 12 square. Correct. So let's figure it out. We have 15 square minus 12 square which is equal to 81 right so so we got this as 81 is x square 
x is equals to square root of 81 which is 9 so we got one of our sides as 9 meters correct let's find the other side which should be the longer of 12 and 5 correct so we can say y square is equals to 12 square plus 5 square correct how much is that so we have 12 square plus 5 square equals to 169 that is y square so y is square root of 169 which you know is 13 correct so you could do square root of our answer which is 169 and gives you 13 so we know this side is 13 so now what is the perimeter so perimeter is sum of all the sides we are talking about outside do you understand so don't add 12 we are talking about the outside of this triangle so we have to add all these sides to get the perimeter right so the perimeter will be 15 meters plus 13 meters plus 5 meters plus 9 meters everything is in meters so when you add them up you get your perimeter which is 15 plus 13 plus 5 plus 9 equals to 42 meters right so i hope the concept is clear see how we found x and y using pythagorean theorem and then the perimeter the next example here is very important we need to find diagonal of a rec rectangular prism i like you to pause the video answer this question and then look into my suggestions now in this particular case we'll first find the diagonal of the base which is this side do you see that so we'll figure this out well all these are right angles do you see this is right angle so we know that side is 8 so I can write here that we have this side as 8 units so this length let me call this as y so we have y square as equal to 12 square plus 8 square correct so 12 square plus 8 square is y square for us so we're looking into that right triangle to get y so let's figure this out how much it is 12 square plus 8 square is equal to 208 so we get y square equals to 208 that is y square now we have to find x that is the hypotenuse of even bigger triangle which is kind of like this so look at this triangle which is kind of the wall in front of you do you see that and this angle here is 90 degrees so what is x square equals to since we have to use y square i'm not doing square root do you realize that i've not done it for a couple of questions before also this is important now one side is y the other side is 9 we have to find what x is we can say x square is equal to 9 square plus y square which is 9 square is 81 plus y square which is 208 so you can add them up so you get 289 as x square so what is x equals to x is equals to square root of 289 we can use our calculator to figure this out square root of 289 is equal to 17 so we get our answer as 17 and what are the units units are meters so always write units so we get our answer which is x equals to 17 meters right okay so let's move on and do few more questions now these are word problems we'll now find the ramp height the question here is a ramp has horizontal length of 120 centimeters and the sloping length of 130 centimeters how high is the ramp so okay let's make one so let's say that is the horizontal length this is the height 
and that is the sloping length is it okay so that is how we have a ramp here so this is right angle what are we given we are given that this ramp has horizontal length of 120 centimeters and a sloping length of 130 centimeter we have to find its height h now since that is a smaller height we can say h square is equal to 130 square minus 120 square so let's use the calculator to figure this out so we get 130 square take away 120 square equals 2 so what we get here is h square equals to 2500 now some of you may not be using this cal calculator you may have to find them individually you get my point right now h is equals to square root of 2500 you know 5 times 5 and then 10 so we get 50 as our length and the units will be in centimeters correct so the height is 50 centimeters so we get our answer which is height of the ramp is 50 centimeters is it okay so that is how it could be answered now let's look into more word problems in word problems you have to read the question properly understand make a figure and then solve it i like you to copy this question solve it and then look into my suggestions the question here is a car travels east at an average speed of 60 kilometers per hour at the same time another car travels due north at an average speed of 80 kilometers per hour after two hours how far apart are the cars so we can say this is our north direction right and that is the east direction so we'll say east and north and now let's try to see what is happening here one car is traveling east at an average speed of 60 kilometers per hour so we say car a is traveling east at 60 kilometers per hour after two hours how much distance will it cover right so after two hours it will be 60 times 2 that is 120 kilometers away is it okay so let us say that this distance is from here to here 120 kilometers right so we'll call this as 120 kilometers now let's look into the second car let's call that as car b right so this is a for us so that is traveling north at the speed of 80 kilometers per hour after two hours it be 80 times 2 which is 160 kilometers correct so you can see when you multiply with hours then we get distance correct you should remember the relation which is let's write down the relation here in the form of a triangle this is important triangle to remember we say distance is equal to speed into time right so the distance is speed into time is that okay now distance in our case is in kilometers speed is in kilometers per hour and time is in hours so after two hours the second car is 160 kilometers away so that is that distance let's say this is 160 kilometers what are we supposed to find we want to find how far apart they are so that means we have to find the distance between these two points how far are they right so i hope the concept is clear to you we have the diagram you can now pause the video answer the question and then check with my solution so this moving north is 160 kilometers this distance is what we need to figure out 
So this distance is the longest side of a right triangle. So distance squared is equal to 160 square plus 120 square, correct? So, I mean 20 square. Let's calculate this. 160 square plus 120 square is equal to 40,000. So we get a distance of 40, 1, 2, 3. That is the distance square. So the distance is square root of 40,000, right? So 4 and 4 zeros. So square root of 4 is 2 and 2 zeros. So we get 200. And the unit should be kilometers, right? So we get our answer that they are going to be 200 kilometers apart. So it's good to write answer that cars will be 200 kilometers apart after two hours. So I hope the concept is clear. Based on the same concept, we have one more question for you. I hope that should be easy to answer. So here is the next question. It says, a ship sailed due west from Prince Rupert for 210 kilometers, then sailed due south for 675 kilometers, and then sailed east for 184 kilometers. How far was the ship from Prince Rupert at that point to the nearest tenth of a kilometer? So I'd like you to pause the video, answer and then look into my suggestions. So I want you to really try it. Okay, so we're talking about a ship which is moving in uh, first west then south and then east right so that's the uh, we are saying that this is north for us right this is east for us that is west and that goes south so to make a diagram what i will do here is that we can assume the ship to be somewhere here so it says a ship sailed due west that means in this direction due west is it okay 675, I mean, ship sailed due west from Prince Rupert. So we'll call this point as Prince Rupert for 210 kilometers. So this becomes 210 kilometers. Then sailed due south, 675, okay. So then sailed south, 675. So it's like a lot of distance. So let's say kind of like this. Let's go up to this point, 675. So we'll say this is 675 kilometers. Then sailed east 184, so less than 210. It sailed east 184, right? So, so let's move east, which is this direction, 184, right? So let us say that is 184 kilometers. Now it says, how far was the ship from Prince Rupert at that point? Now we have to find the distance from starting to end. So that means this is the distance D, which we have to figure out. So I hope now it is absolutely clear. You can pause the video, answer, and then look into my suggestions. Now to find this distance, we may have to do some calculations. So I'm going to extend this and form a right triangle. Do you see how? Like this. Now it becomes simpler to solve this particular question, right? So what we have here is a right triangle right there. Now this side should be equal to that. That means this side here is also 675 kilometers, correct? But what is that length? To find this length, we can say that has to be uh, 210 take away 184. Is it okay? 210 take away 184. So let's use calculator. So we have 210 minus 184 equals to 26. 
So this particular dimension is 26 kilometers. So we got two parts, the legs of our right triangle, we have to find D. So we know D square is equal to 26 square plus 675 square. Okay, so let's use the calculator again to calculate the answer. 26 square plus 675 square gives us 45. So we have D square as 456301. So what is D? The distance is square root of 456301. Right? So we do square root of our answer, which is equal to 675.5. Correct? So that is what we get. We have to round it to nearest. So be careful. It says nearest tenth of a kilometer, right? So that is okay. So we have the answer as 675.5 kilometers. So that becomes the answer. Slightly more than 675. That makes sense, correct? So that is how you could actually answer this question. I hope you understand and appreciate it. Let's move forward and now we are almost at the end so this is the last question of our exercise now here we are going to find area of a pentagon with five isosceles triangles so here is a pentagon five-sided figure where the triangles are isosceles these sides shown are 8.5 centimeter each base is 10 centimeter each correct you have to find area of the whole pentagon now how much it is so we will find area of pentagon which is how much since there are five triangles it will be five times area of triangles does it make sense to you right but how do we find area of triangle well, let's do some construction. We know that if I draw a perpendicular from here, it is going to divide this into equal sides. Since sides are 10, half of 10 is going to be 5. We already know one of these sides, which is 8.5. Correct? Since we know that, we can find the height of our triangle. Is it okay? Using Pythagorean theorem. So height h is equal to, let's write h square. Since it is a smaller side, it will be 8.5 whole square minus 5 square. Correct? So that is how we find the square of the height. So we'll do 8.5 square minus 5 square equals to uh, let's write it in decimals. It is equal to 47.25. That is height squared. So height is square root of 47.25. So we'll do square root of our answer, which is equal to, let's find it in decimal numbers. It is equal to 6.8738. I'm writing this as 4. Is it okay? So that becomes the height of our triangle. Since we know the height, we can find area of the triangle. I hope you remember the formula. Here is your formula. Area of triangle is area of triangle is half base times height. Correct? So in our case, half base is 10 right this is the base for us the whole thing times 10 times height which is 6.874 so let's multiply them and get our answer so we have 6.874 already times 10 divided by 2 equals 2 in decimals we have the answer as 34 point we'll round this to 37 34.37 that is area of one triangle. So what is area of pentagon? 
So area of pentagon will be 5 times, correct? Will be 5 times area of a triangle, so which is 5 times 34.37, correct? And that is equal to, let's multiply, 5 times 34.37 is equal to, in decimals again, 171.85. We are going to round this to whole numbers. So we can write this as 172 and the units will be centimeter square. Do you get it? So that is how we can find area of the pentagon. So in this particular video, I have taken up wide variety of examples. We have taken simple questions to find height of a ram or as a word problem, solving few triangles, and then word problems with speed, distance, and time. And this one with pentagon isosceles triangles. This is really a challenge question at this stage. I hope you understand and appreciate what we have done and you learn from it. Feel free to like my videos, share them with your friends. And if you subscribe, that will be even better. Thank you and all the best.